Welcome to the tutorial for Paracosms, which is a script I've written that lets you sort of construct these auditory worlds. Let's pull it up here. Here's the GitHub page. Um, so it's a lot of things and I'm going to try to go over as much as I can of them. So it's mostly a sampler, but it's also a tracker. You can load a lot of samples. Um, I think the key thing is that the sample playback is synchronized, which means if you load in a sample, that sample will play in sync with the tempo, whatever the length of the sample is. So you can have multiple samples of different lengths, and they will be unsynchronized with each other, but each synchronized with the tempo. That'll make more sense later. Um, there's some automatic warping, gapless playback, there's one shots, filters, effects, lots of effects, <laughs> gestures with you if you have the grid and um, works with Crow and a keyboard. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing we can do is install it. So I have a Norns that doesn't have it installed. The install process is two steps, um, unlike a lot of scripts. So once you install it, you have to run it. So we can just go, we can do that on the Norns, or we can do it here. Let's do it on the Norns. So this is the installation script, and the only thing you can do is press K3, and it will install all the plugins, all the necessary utilities, um, some demo files. This might take a minute or two. I might speed this up. Okay, so now it says it's installed. Restart the norms. So we can go ahead and go to system, restart. Yep. Okay, so let's start Paracosms. There we go. And when you load it the first time, it'll give you the welcome message and it will load in some samples. So basic instructions. These samples are some of the demo samples, but I can show how to do this coming up. Um, basic instructions are K3 will trigger a sample. And the longer you hold it, the more it will fade in or fade out. So if you hold it and then let go, it will fade out. So all the samples, this is like an 8 beat loop here, it will play in sync with the other samples no matter when you start them. So we go use this E1 to go to the next sample. And there should be a bunch of samples in here. We can load in another sample. And it will start playing. This one happened to start playing at the beginning. Here it should be playing in sync. There's another one. That one started in the middle. They're all playing in sync. So the other button here, K2, will scroll through all of these parameters. And these are all available in the menu, but sometimes it's nice to have access to them, like this stutter effect. Um, these are sends for each of the FX, so there's a tape deck, there's a clouds type grains thing, a reverb, and then the main. So we could turn down the main. And then to get to the other row, you hold this K1 and then rotate either Q E2 or E3. So now we're in the tape deck mode. And this costs CPU, but only if you're using it. If I turn it off, it will stop using the CPU for a minute. Um, we have a metronome here. That's gonna be useful for recording stuff in sync, the volume control, um, an LFO for the volume, we can just turn that and that's the depth of it, so that's pretty intense depth. 
and then there's a period which you can set for the, the length of it. There's also a pan LFO which is similar. You can change the depth of that. Filters. And all of these are again available in this parameters menu. So this is sample one, that's the file, we're playing it. The mode, um, there's sort of a lot of parameters. And I'll go through a lot of them. I think all of them. Um, but this is just the basics for now. So the nice thing about this menu is that if you select a different sample, it will change all the parameters for that sample. So you can select it there, or we can select it on this screen. So if we go to sample three, you go back to the menu, this is sample three now. If you go to sample two or one, you go back here, it's sample one now. Um, one other thing I'll mention is that this toggles the sample, but if you want to go to a new slot, you have to hold K1 and rotate E1. And that now we'll be seeing these samples that we did not see before. These are there's 112 slots that you can potentially store stuff in. You definitely can't play that many at once because the norms will run out of CPU. But you can play a good dozen or so depending on whether they're mono or stereo. So yes, let's stop this and let's do some recording. Oh. I'll talk about these. Um, so these are all loops that I've loaded here, but I've also, some of these demos are the one-shot samples, which are pretty much the same, but when you hit them, they don't loop. And you can change that parameter in here. It says one-shot, we can change it to loop, and then it will loop, and if we go back to one-shot, it'll be one-shot. Now, the nice thing about one shot is that there is a sort of secret menu that appears, this Euclidean sequencer, which you can use to sequence it straight from this menu. So then it kind of plays like a loop, but it is sequencing it. So that's the easy way to sequence one shots from the norms. You can also sequence stuff from the grid, and I'll get to that. I think. <laughs> okay, so we are into the samples. We've got the samples. Let's start over. Let's start it again. Now, now it's going to start. <laughs> it starts with a little quote. We're going to start with an empty slate now. Um, it's possible to load those demo samples again, and I can show how to do that. But for now, let's do some recording, which is another basic thing. So I have here a little device that I'll plug in to record. And recording is pretty simple. I should have this on the same BPM probably. So I can play stuff from here. Great. And to record, you just press K1, K3, like it says. And it's ready to record. It's going to record when it hits the threshold. So you just start playing. And when it records, it records a um, overlap. So it continues recording after. So I set it to eight beats here. It'll record after those eight beats and get another beat and then crossfade that in the beginning. So it plays perfectly in sync in the loop. There's no clicks or anything. Um, one thing about this type of recording is that the first beat is always going to be in the beginning. So let's do a simple one. Um, it's triggered on that first beat and our first beat happens to be the first beat but it will always align it to the first beat. If you don't want that, you can change it. So if we go into the parameters menu and we go to recording, here we can change the length, the threshold, which is 40 dB, um, but we can change the recording start to beat one to no. And now you'll see a little blinky 
that tells you where you are in this 8-beat loop. And we can even turn on our little metronome to hear that. And now we're ready to record. So it's going to start the recording where I started it. So there will be a break. Um, I didn't, I didn't listen to that metronome to do that. So it might be off a little bit. But if you want to get things in sync, you have that little blinky and you have the metronome and you just can hit record to get that. Um, you can also, instead of using the threshold, just hit K1, K3 again. And now it's recording. And there will be a blank spot. There you go. Um, in all of these recordings, you notice they have kind of weird names. So the names up there, 20220083. That's um, save, that's the date, and it's actually in the Norns now. If we go to, what am I doing? If we go to like the tape, there's a folder called Paracosms Recordings and every recording you make is here. And it's saved there so you can use it at a later time or whatever. And I should also mention that there is a data folder. Oh, I can't get to the data folder from here that has all the conversions. When you load a file, if the file, oh, let's do that actually. So let's load a file. So we'll go to slot two and we'll go into here and we'll go to file and I've got loads of samples, amens, cool. So these are fast, let's look for a slower one. Here's a 30, 138. So it loads it automatically to be at 120. So it's going to play these beats at 120 BPM. It does that by repitching it. And the algorithm for repitching it is down here at the bottom of the parameters. It's going to use, by default, the melodic algorithm. Um, so if you switch that to drums, it will try not to keep the pitch the same. It will just speed it up or slow it down, which I find better. So that's the sound. We can do this live. Let's see. Melodic. So it's a little glitchy. Drums. You can also change what... It tries to guess the BPM. You can change what the BPM of the source is. But then if you're wrong, it will not be in sync, probably. You can change the source note, you can tune it up and down, and every time you do these alterations, it's going to regenerate a new file that will be in that data folder for Paracosms. So it, you just every once in a while, maybe clear that file out. Okay, so far so good. Let's see, if done recording, synchronizing metronome, loading, okay. Then, oh, the special loading. So the special loading is you can load with banks. So let's show this. We open up Maiden, and this is done with code. So we're gonna open up Paracosms. This script here, Paracosms, is meant to be edited. I've let, I put in some notes about how to edit it. You can edit, um, so I like to make these this file I copy multiple times and then use it for performances um, or just ideas. So I put in like here, this function substance will run before everything. And so you can set up the clock tempo and say, I want the clock to start at 1, 120 or whatever. Um, and then we have these things called blocks. And a block is basically each is 16 samples. So we have seven rows of 16 samples. That makes sense if you have the grid but it doesn't really matter. Um, it'll be 112 samples total. So automatically it will load everything in row one. So anything we put into row one in the audio file, there's this folder here, row one, anything we load in there will be loaded on start. Now, here's those demo files. So the demo file has this kind of block that's loaded where it loads, oh, this is an old one. I need to get rid of this. This is something I was doing. 
Um, let's change this though. Let's change one of these blocks. I'll load in a folder that I have on my computer. Let's see here. Do I have anything in the seamless loops? Yeah, I have a bunch of stuff. So I'll load one of these. Um, so I'll load this audio folder, seamless loops, and those are all 100 BPM, but it's going to automatically convert it to, it's going to automatically convert it to 120 BPM. So I'll save that. And then finally, you can change things to happen after. So in the style function, so style after substance. And you can change things like, um, you can turn on LFOs. So like if you uncomment this one, this goes through all the parameters for the amp and the amp strength is the LFO strength and the pan strength. So this will make all of the um, amplitude and pan LFOs turned on. And you can set any parameter you want here. It doesn't matter. This is just an example. And um, oh yeah, I'll mention that the nice thing about loading these folders is you can change parameters in them also. So let's grab here. So these examples here are nice. So like here, we can change the send to the tape. So if we do the params, let's do a new line, params equals send main. So turn the main down and turn the tape to one. Now I know that's what it's called because the names are in this parameter folder. So if we go down to the sends, to, to, to tape deck. So what is that name? You press K1 and then press K3. It's called to send tape, but we ignore the number. The number is the number of the sample. So we ignore that. We just use send tape and we'll set send tape to one. And that's what we put here. Send tape is one. So this means every sample we load in that first bank will have the tape deck activated automatically. So we can just run that. And there we go. Things are loading. It's going to be loading and take a little bit to convert all of those 100 BPM samples to 120. So it doesn't let you do anything while that's happening. Now we are ready. So we have a bunch of pads and they are all loaded with the tape deck all the way on. So you can use this Maiden script essentially to customize every instance of Paracosms. So you, that's why I feel like this is like making your own worlds. You can construct these scripts that pull together all these samples and apply all the effects you want um, and makes it really accessible to you. Uh, let's do another example of that. Let's load in the, let's load in the, um, here we go, I'll copy this, the one shots. So these are the one shots on the Norns already. There's an example of this I'm just going to copy paste. So this is loading the XOX. 909 samples into the second bank. One shot is two. That means the one shot is on. Attack, we're sending to attack to 0 0.002 milliseconds. So it's a sharp attack. I think the default is 0 0.002 now. So that shouldn't matter. And we can also throw these on. So they're also in the tape deck. Great. So we turn that on, run it again. Bam, load fail. Let's read about it. <laughs> oh, did I forget? I forgot a bracket. Sorry. So it says that here. Bracket expected. And I left out a bracket because params is its own bracket. Folder is its own bracket. Great. So now we're loading. Loads much faster now because all the files are cached now. And we have all of these pads. We could play one of them. And then we will, if we go all the way, we now have a bass drum from the 909. And we can sequence it with this pad. Let's turn the sequencer on. Cool. 
oh, this is a good time to talk about the side chaining. So in the new version 1.3, you can side chain. So if we go into parameters, there's only one bus to side chain. So you can put whatever you want into it, um, but you have to keep that in mind. You can't side chain multiple things and multiple things. So we want the kick drum to be the compressing thing that will be side chaining. So we turn that compressing to yes. And now we not want to make our pad that's playing compressible. So we can go look for it. I forgot which one it was. This is a little easier with the grid. Number four. There we are on the menu. See, so this is the number four menu since it's already changed automatically. We make it compressible. And it's hard to hear that, but we can go back to the kick. Number 16 can turn off its send, but it will still be compressing, it just won't be sending out to the tape deck. And now we can modify some of the sidechain parameters. There we go. So the amount of sidechaining. could easily just put another synth on and then have it be side chains as well. Let's see what we got here. These are all pretty random things. We gotta make it compressible so it's side chains. Okay, um, so while I'm here, there's a stutter effect. It's kind of nice on drums, but it should you can change the length of it, the repeats. Well, let's go ahead and throw in some drums. Let's just change this one to drums. Oh, you know what? I could just record some drums. Is this right here? So we'll do K1, K3, ready to record. modifying this offset, which will move it back and forth with the rest of the things playing. And now this, uh, oh yeah, there's another effect called time stretching, which is very fun with drums. You turn that on and you can change this window, slow it down. Oh yeah, and then the other nice thing is all the loops you can change the start and end point. And it will still try to be in sync, but only if it's in a, a syncable position. So this, I put it halfway through, so it's still in sync, but if I put it really close, it may not be. this I like this stutter. It's great. Uh, oh yeah, okay, that doesn't matter. Next up is the tracker and part of the grid. So I think that's good for now. I'll set up the grid. Yeah, let's do the grid. Let's save this. So let's load the, the grid. 
So we gotta we gotta move. Let's re let's redo this. Let's see. Okay. Grid is here. So the grid is not required. It's just optional. Um, the nice thing about the grid is that it lets you see all the samples that are loaded and lets you pretty easily load them. Um, so you can switch between things on the grid just by clicking them and it will show what they are. And just like the K3 button, if you hold the grid button, it can load it in. And then hold it again, it'll load it out. And if you don't like that behavior, you want some like quick stop stuff, it's possible to edit that. So if you go to the grid menu, and so toggle press, you say only short, and then it loads immediately. We'll just keep it, I like the long, short and long. So one shots are different though, they will press, they'll emit as soon as you touch them. So if we turn on our kick, we can turn on this and we can see. Cool. Let's load in. Oh yeah, if you hold down, it will automatically turn on the Euclidean. So we had set up a little thing. Let's load it up. P sets. Load. Okay. So we are loaded up. We have our compressing kick, and we can play one of these samples. And we don't hear the kick because I turned down the main. So you can hear the side chaining better. So let's turn off the Euclidean. Let's turn off this. Um, so the grid lets you do two special things. Um, well, three. So this screen lets you, this, there's a special row here. The first button lets you set the recording time, which is useful if you want to quickly change the recording time. So you can see this change to any number of beats. The second button lets you change the position. Uh, so if we go to the drums, this is fun to do. The first set of points is the start position and the second these two rows are the length so if we play this we can change the length then we can move that anywhere we want and it will still try to keep it in beat so that should still be in beat with this, it's kind of hard to hear that. We can load another one. So whichever sample you select here is going to be the one that's affected by um, in the sample screen, the second screen. So if we go back to that drum pattern, you can see that it's highlighted only partially. Here we can go edit this pad so it only plays the beginning. Great. So the rest of the buttons are the same. They're all um, pattern recorders. So they're useful for the one shots, but you can also use them for loops. So essentially, you hold one down and let go, and it should start to blink. There we go, it's blinking. Now we're in pattern recording mode, so we can record something with these one shots here. And it's gonna quantize it automatically. Oh, you have to press it first. I forgot that. You click it. It blinks, blinks, blinks. So 
So now we have two pattern recorders going. Um, they kind of breathe when they're activated. You can click on them and then press them again to turn it off. Press them and turn it on again. And if you want to record a new one, you just hold it, let go, blink, 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 and then you can just... drums back in. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, grit's pretty easy. Um, the nice thing also is that you can turn off a lot of things at the same time. So, not these patterns. But on these, you can press 2 and they'll fade out, or you can press more than two. Quickly overwhelm the tape deck. Okay, um, the grid, that's about it for the grid. What am I missing? Um, yeah, I'll just say again, this row basically is that first row, if we go back to Maiden we have these banks that we've loaded. The first block is gonna be the first row, second block, second row, third block, so on. So each can only hold 16. The reason the 16 is because of the grid, uh, but also because you don't need to have thousands of samples maybe. Uh, yeah, so that's the grid. Let's do the tracker next. So I'm going to move the grid out and set up the keyboard and we'll do the tracker. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I have the keyboard plugged in. I have the crow plugged in because I'm gonna use the crow for this part. I'll just show really quick. I have a little script I like to use. I call it two tuner. It's just like tuner, but two of them. And I have two oscillators and this will set both oscillators to a certain pitch and then you can see the pitch and then tune them accordingly. I've already tuned these and there's a lot of effects on them so you don't see the right numbers, um, but this is really nice to kind of get things in tune. So if we load up Paracosms now, we can load up the tracker. I'm gonna turn off my face cam. To do the tracker, all you do is press a key on the keyboard and then it loads you into tracker mode. So tracker mode, Essentially the keyboard is like a Renoise keyboard and these are keys, like notes that you can press and then there's certain other keys that can toggle things. All the keys are written out into the help manual. So this is on the readme or on the thread. So most of the keys are the keyboard keys but then there's some other note on, note off, changing octaves and stuff. So automatically it will sequence the sample position and you can switch that by holding shift and then pressing up and we can sample the sam or sequence the sample pitch as well and we can do crow so let's do something with sample pitch let's go to the kick so if we turn any knob onto here we automatically go back into the regular mode so our kick is on 17 and let's sequence the kick with the tracker. So we can just put in some notes and then press space and it will play. So I'm sampling, I'm doing the sample position and one of the gotchas is that the sample position will change depending on the note and the notes I've chosen are not audible. So that's annoying. So instead of doing the sample position, I'll do the pitch. Oh, it's also not audible because I turned down the volume. There it is. So um, the rows are basically each measure and the column is the division of the measure. So you can put more notes in these columns and it will divide that measure by that many notes. So for instance, if I put 
a bunch of notes here. It's going to hit all of those in a division divided by those number of notes. Um, so you type in notes with the keyboard and then you can type in rests with uh, caps lock and then holds, but holds don't make sense right now for this, um, with the tab. And then you can toggle play with space. Um, so you can sequence all these samples, no problem, but you can also sequence other stuff. So I like to sequence the oscillators. So to do that, we can go to a new sample or new track with the left and right buttons back and forth. So we go to an empty one. Doesn't matter which one because we're going to do the crow. So we just hit up, shift and up. And now crow one, two, we can write in a sequence. So put an E and a G, and maybe an A, B. So, and then you play with tab, or space, sorry. It's pretty loud. Why is it so loud? Great. So now that sequence, we can sequence another one. We can go here to the third one. And we can, this is going to be my bass, so let's put in some notes here. Put in E, G, A, B. And then we can actually delete notes with the delete button. And we can change the octave by doing control and then these brackets. So I can move this an octave down by retyping it in. And I'll talk about one other little thing is that the inputs are actually run through the engine. So you see the monitor is zero, but we're still hearing the inputs. That's because there's a special parameter called the audio in. And there you can select a bunch of different things. So I have two oscillators, they're coming in through the left and right channels, and so they're automatically in stereo. But I can actually set them to mono, and mono, and then I can pan them individually back to the center. You can also apply effects individually. to a single channel. Um, so there's low pass, you, can do, you have all the sends per channel, the compression per channel. So basically the audio input is like a mini sample. It's got a bunch of different effects that you can apply to it. Um, and I just find this useful for my setup. If you want just a standard method, you keep it on stereo, and then everything you edit will change both of them so it's in stereo. And the pan is special, so it will reverse the two, so you can split them. So back to the tracker. Um, tracker is pretty simple, actually. <laughs> so I guess there's two other th modes I should talk about. Um, if you press escape, you can move out of edit mode into performance mode where every note you play, if I stop it with the space bar, now I can play with the keyboard. So no ons are when you hit it, and then no offs are when you let go. And there's another mode I like. I combine the edit and the performance mode into an ERP mode so you can edit things while it's performing. This is kind of nice. Um, if we load in basically a bunch of dots, so these are just rests, then we set it to play. We can hold, and then it will automatically add in the ties for us. So you can put in as many dots as you want to get the timing how you want. And then 
once you're out of Earth mode, you can go back to edit mode and edit them individually. Let's see, am I missing anything? Oh, I am. So another nice thing about this is that you can record things from the tracker mode. So if you do Control R, it will set the record mode on so it's queued, and then when it hits the beginning again, it will record the number of beats that there are. So now I'll stop that track, but we have actually recorded it here onto Paracosmos. So now this track is saved. We can do that with the other track as well. So we go Shift, we can record this track, Control R. So it's trying to record it from the beginning of the measure. I'll stop it now with play. But you can hear it still playing, because now both of these are recorded, and both of them can now be modulated from these parameters, and just like a regular sample. Um, oh, there's like one other little thing. So if you type in, type in some more notes here, maybe. I don't want to see sharp out here. So we can delete these. And then you can copy and paste by doing control C, control V. Oops. I did control B, which makes a blank. Um, that's also a nice thing to do though. So I lost that. <laughs> Little annoying. So I can just do this, copy and paste this again. It's easier when the keyboard is not to the side. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That's the tracker. It's pretty simple. And then again, when you, if you want to save stuff, you can just go to. Um, Set save. Oh, I'm going to overwrite whatever that is. And you can load it back up. But the tracks are actually saved in text files that you can read. So if we go back to Maiden and we go into the data folder, there's a whole bunch of data stuff in Paracosms. We've got our save file. Here's all the, the cache of every thing we've converted and everything uh, yeah everything we've converted in some of the images and here this text file is going to be our tracks so you can edit this text file and then load it back it's simply just a matter of editing these notes make sure you keep these three dashes in between things that separates the different tracks but we've got the note note and then a dash for holding it and then a dot for rest um, yeah so you can edit that and back it up there there's three files that you need to keep to keep things backed up. So these three files, um, this text file is only if you have tracks. Um, yeah, I think that's probably about it. So let me know if you ever have problems or some bug occurs. I actually found a bug while I was doing this, a little one. Uh, yeah, have fun with it.